Day 12, part 12. Uh, today, uh, I'm just going to kind of tell a little bit about the type of person that I am. The fact that uh, I don't give up uh, on anything. Uh, never have, never will. I mean, my whole life I've been searching for who my father is. And, uh, you know, now that I've gotten so close and I've been so close so many times, there's just no way that I'll ever give up. And... Today, I want to talk about how I came across identity genetics. So as I mentioned yesterday, I continued to call them for 28 days straight, leaving messages uh, you know, pretty much every single day, stating that if nobody calls me back, I'm just going to continue to call. Well, uh, Brookings, South Dakota is only about 60 miles from where I live. And one day I was just fed up and I said, you know what? I found four addresses online uh, for this identity genetics. I'm just going to write them all down and go. So went up uh, to Brookings and went to the first location and nothing. It was just a small office space that was for rent. Uh, went to the second location and it was in the Brookings research area, uh, but there was no sign of identity genetics. Uh, and then went to the third location in Brookings, and again, just kind of another dead end. Uh, the fourth location was actually in Aurora, South Dakota, uh, location, which is a small, small town, uh, out in the middle of nowhere, uh, between the Minnesota border and, uh, and Brookings. So I'm like, you know what? I came all this way. I'm not going to give up. I, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go out. I'm going to, I'm not going to leave any stone unturned. So I started driving out to this location. It's in the middle of the country. And as I get close to, to the location where my GPS is taking me, I see this sign that says something about a pink lady's bakery. And I'm like, oh man, I have a feeling that I drove all of this way and that this address is going to lead me right to this, this bakery. Um, so I go and it, uh, lo and behold, leads me right to this pink lady's bakery. Uh, which is just a shed uh, out in the middle of the country. And I'm like, well, I came all this way. I'm just going to go up, knock on the door, see if there's anybody there. So I go up, knock on the door. Nobody's there, but I can see inside the window there's a business card with a phone number. I uh, get back out in my truck, and, and I leave, and I call that phone number as I'm leaving. And uh, lo and behold, a, a gal answers, and I ask her, I said, hey, do you know of an Alex Kaler? or identity genetics. And, and she says, oh, yes, I do, as a matter of fact, and um, had, you know, not a, a ton of great things to say about how she knew him. But anyway, I was just uh, just stunned. I was like, oh, my gosh, okay, great, perfect. This lady can point me in the right direction. But after all the things that she had to say about him, I figured there was no way that he would possibly still be around. And uh, when I asked where he lived, she's like, well, just at the end of the section. So I'm like, oh my God, no way. I'm going to, uh, literally this, this guy is like next to where my truck was at the particular time. So, uh, I'm like, well, I'm going to go in there and see if I can get a hold of him. And, uh, she says, well, good luck. There's other people that have uh, wanted to talk to him in the past and has never gotten anywhere. So good luck. So with, uh, with no hopes of anything, I pull in this man's driveway and I sit there and I, I knock on his front door and I knock and I knock and I knock. And it seems like two, three, four minutes go by. Uh, finally, when I feel like I've, uh, knocked enough that there's obviously nobody here, I turn around and walk back to my truck and literally as I put my hand on the door of my truck, uh, the door front door opens. I turn around and it's uh, this Dr. Alex Kaler. Um, I couldn't believe it. So I, uh, I went up to him and he's like, what, you know, what can I help you with? And I'm like, I have no idea how to explain this to you, but uh, I, I showed him the information from, you know, 19, uh, 98, I'm sorry, 1997 DNA test that was done and then my 2018 results and he looked at the paper and I mean it had his name on the bottom and then he's like, oh yep, this is one that was done by James and and I said, well, okay, and then how can I be have no connection to to my father uh, on this, but then on on this test with you know his sister, I've connected uh, you know ninety nine point nine seven one eight percent to, and he looks 
text and he said, well, you know, first off, this one here from uh, uh, Health Street, which is a company by LabCorp, he's like, this one, hands down is, is, you know, by far better be than the one that I originally did because the, the technology has advanced so much. Uh, he's like, so, you know, I would throw mine out knowing that this one's up there. And I couldn't believe that this guy had, had said this. He was saying it to me right in front of me. And then I asked, how could these things possibly happen? And he's like, well, you know, the DNA tests weren't uh, nearly as good as everybody had thought that they might be. He's like, they got you know, contaminated very easy. He's like, this, this, these specimens uh, are very fragile. He's like a single strand of hair or dust from skin or, or whatever, uh, you know, could contaminate them and give, give a, a, a negative result. Or he's like, sometimes things get mislabeled. And he's like, it's, it's very possible that, you know, maybe the, the DNA that was collected was, was mislabeled. And, uh, you know, my vial was wrapped with my mother's name and my mother's was wrapped with my name. So there's no way that my father's DNA and my DNA would match. And, uh, you know, he also said, plus, he's like, this was also the late 90s and we didn't have the HIPAA uh, regulations and we didn't have the strict laws that we did. And he's like, there's a lot of, you know, people. And he's like, I could tell you stories. He's like, there's a lot of people that, you know, found ways to cheat these systems because of, you know, the, the, the lack laws. So he's like, you know, there, there's a number of different reasons why this could have been uh, wrong. He's like, but I would go based off of this new information. And I, I just, I, I couldn't believe that I was having this conversation with him and I asked him if he would ever be interested in coming forward and, and talking about it and he uh, was very adamant that he wouldn't uh, since then I've actually written him a letter uh, as well just kind of letting him know what this really means to me and I haven't heard anything back from him uh, either but uh, anyway, I take that information and then I go to the state of South Dakota with that information. So I know I went a little bit long today, but uh, tomorrow we'll talk about what happens when I bring that information that I got from the actual uh, person whose lab performed the tests uh, that there could have been an error. When I bring that to the state of South Dakota, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what they uh, say tomorrow. So hope you're enjoying this. Please like, please share, uh, help me get the word out. I want to grow this uh you know, this, this message and this movement. So thanks a lot. Appreciate it.